Hello everyone, this is Sam Hill, host of How I Came Up, and this week we have another treat, a true friend of the show, Addison Henderson. He's going to talk about growing up here in Buffalo, New York, and what it's like to be out on the West Coast, and also how his father and mother has impacted his life. And just maybe, maybe, he might even talk a little bit about his friendship with Black Panther. Now let's get to it. This is how I came up. My name is Addison Henderson. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. Well, my childhood was um, filled with a lot of great history. Um, my father is the, uh, the bishop of the Underground Railroad Church, uh, the Michigan Street Baptist Church. Um, and he has been the steward over that church since 1974. Um, it's also it's a national monument, so people from all across the world come there and and listen to my dad talk about the church. Uh, my mother was a politician, a very hard driven woman, always uh, pushed me to greatness. Um, and speaking of the church, adjacent to the church was the Nash House. Now I lived in that house uh, from the time I was like six years old until I left for college, and that house is also a museum. And so it's a part of the, the, the now great bustling uh, African-American corridor. So I lived in the Nash House. The church adjacent to it, right across the parking lot, was the church I grew up in. And at Fort Spell, we lived in the bottom of that church. Uh, my father was a world traveler. Um, and so he would go all across the world before he had me, because he had me late in life. He was 46 when he had me. And he would travel across the world and film it. And so on Saturday mornings, he would take me into the church, pull down the, uh, the screen and pull out the projector. And he would just play these old reels and tell me stories and stories and stories. And so that was the beginning of me as a filmmaker and as a storyteller and also as an actor because I used to sit there and I used to tell my dad all the time that if you weren't a preacher, you know, you would have been one hell of a comedian. And so seeing him do his thing was also in, in, embedded in me and that showmanship that him and also my mother had because she was a great orator as well. Um, you know, and, but she was hired, hired scrap, but she went to the, she was in the army. She was a sergeant in the army. You know, she was tough. You know, her car flipped over. She was driving. Uh, her car flipped over five times while in the army. She just walked away, away, away with a few bumps and bruises. So, you know, I'm birthed from, you know, tough, driven, intellectual, spiritual people. And, you know, that is what surrounded my childhood. Um, and it was a blessing. And when I look back on it, I look back all the rich history that I'm a part of. So, you know, so in my stories, those are a lot of things that I talk about. Those are the subject matters that I dive into. And, and you know, th that's really what drives me. And then my, my, my upbringing drives that fact as well. You know, because the spiritual part of it is always something that's gonna be a part of me and part of my stories. Because without the spirituality part of it, then you don't have me. So when I go into a project, that part is always gonna be in there because meaning, the meaning to my images, right? What is the meaning behind my images? That That is what I want to show the world and that is what I am do doing now and that's what we're gonna to continue to do, me and my team. And also, not to be too long-winded here, um, I try to surround myself with like-minded people. Um, there's an old saying, uh, in my, in, in my late, my late, my late great brother used to tell me this, Chadwick Boseman, he said, yo, iron sharpens iron. And so I try to surround myself with people that are equally as smart or smarter than me um, and have their own sensibilities that have great ideas that can bring something to the table. Um, and, so, and so all my life doing this, it has taken me many, many years to get to this point. I've been in the game like 18 years, um, but it was all a maturation process. It was all a learning process, but then also taking those principles that I learned growing up, applying them to my daily life and you know, sustaining my hunger and my and my passion for my craft um, through the ups and the downs, through the through the trials and tribulations, through the failures, and so and so, yeah, man, it's it's you know that upbringing has always been, you know, a part of me. It's always been in the front, in the back of my mind, and so I think about it daily, um, and I would not be who I am without it. Hi, my name is Shamari James co-founder and CEO of Equity Now Inc., nonprofit charter management organization to Legends Charter School. And our mission, we believe in expediting change. So we provide 
as a charter management organization services to Legends Charter School so every single kid in our school receives a stock portfolio. It's not just enough to grow your wealth, but you also need to sustain your wealth. So we're fundamentally focused on ensuring that we are seeing that there is competency exercise with social and emotional learning within our school and in the communities that we serve. So now that you've seen and heard about Equity Now Inc., I hope that you're wondering how can you help? Please visit us at www.equitynowinc.org to support us, to donate to us, to become a partner, or even collaborate. We're also on all social media at Equity Now Inc. We appreciate you. Look forward to working with you. Like father, like son. Man, what ha what have I been doing for 18 years? Boy, I tell you, it's been a roller coaster, pure excitement, some ups and downs, a little bit of depression, a little bit of this for over those course of those 18 years. Man, I remember my best friend um, at the time in high school, he just graduated. I think I went and played a year of football or two, a year and a half or whatever. Came back, my best friend was murdered. Uh, Jermaine Cross, he was, he, you know, he, he was, um, he was gunned down. And and I was going through a I was going through a crisis at that time, and you know, and I almost lost my life in the city of Buffalo. And I said, you know what, I got to get out of here. Picked up, picked up, pick, pack, packed up my I packed up my car, had like two hundred dollars in my pocket. I had some family in Jersey City on my mother's side, family in Jersey City in Newark. I went and stayed with them, um, crashed on their couch. And within a couple of weeks, I was enrolled in acting, acting and directing school at HB Studios. And then from there, I went and did that, did a two-year program, did all that, and, and 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 I was like, okay, let me try my hand. Let me go out to LA and see what I can do. I'm young. I'm 21, 22 years old. Let me go out to LA and and and, and make it happen. But in my mind, I always knew I wanted to create films and do that. So um, the American Black Film Festival, I volunteered for that, making uh, connections and things of that nature. Um, but went out to LA and, you know, was having a great time establishing myself as a young kid out here, got an agent, uh, had booked some commercials, but I was really looking for something more for my soul that filled my soul. Not to say that acting doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't fill my soul. It fills my soul completely, but I'm a, I'm a more like, you know, project acting, directing, producing all that, all that encompassing of the things I like to do. So <clears throat> I'm like, okay. Well, let me let me get out of here for a little while. Let me go and try my hand and make some shorts and acting them and direct them. And so I met a I met a guy at the American Black Film Festival, and he was like, "Yo, I'm living out here in Miami. I got equipment and all that. Why don't you come out here, stay out here for a couple months, and make make some short films?" So I was like, "All right, well, shoot, let's do it." And so I was out. I left LA, packed up, went and went and made some short films in in, in Miami, and that was like my film school honestly speaking, um, because the movies weren't like literally that great. They were like second year film student movies, um, but I was doing it and I felt good. And I was like, sh I was having screenings all throughout Miami. It was like, yo, you see this, you see the film, I come back to Buffalo, had a screening. And so I was like, okay, this is, this is, I feel good about this. I feel fulfilled when I'm doing this, right? And so uh, Corey Green, I was having one of, uh, I was having a screening uh, of my film, one of my shorts. And Corey Green at the African American Cultural Center, actually. And Corey Green, he um, he he came to the screen and he was like, "Man, yo, man, hey, I've been following you and uh, seeing what you're doing because we play football together, and and in college and whatnot." And he was like, "Man, we need to do something. We need to do something." So we sat, and I remember we were sitting in his Bonneville, and you know we were just talking and talking. And he was like, "We should do something about Buffalo." I was like, "Yeah, we should. I've been thinking about that." Before me and Corey had this this talk, I went to Africa with my dad, um, straight uh, from Miami. He called me, said, "Come to Africa with me," and I was like, "Okay, cool." And I was like, "This would be good for me to figure out what's next. What am I going to do next?" So I went and had a spiritual awakening in Ghana, West Africa, and came back, had the screening, talked to Corey, and he was like, "Yo, let's do something about Buffalo." And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Let's do it. We started brainstorming and this and that. And then the Forgotten City came out of those brainstorming conversations. And next thing you know, I swear to God, a couple of weeks, 
we had we 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 pulled we pulled some money together and we got a camera. We got like a eight hundred dollar camera and some 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 boom equipment. I'm running through the city with all type of camera equipment and sound equipment on me at the same time, like a like a newsman. And we're out everywhere filming, talking about the the things that you know, the things that were on our heart, what we seen growing up on the east side, the history, but then also the 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 politics, the racism, the unemployment. Um, you know, the, the you know, everything. And then we also weaved in there, which was a through line for our story, was the murder of Jermaine Cross. And actually, Corey's childhood friend was the killer of my best friend. So we wanted to tell a story of unity of people coming together through hardship. So we did that, right? I'm tw I'm like 25 at the time. And and then next thing you know, uh, 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 a producer, uh, our voice, Jamie Moses, he said, yo, Addison, what do you want to do next? I was like, well, I went to Africa with my dad. He's going back to Africa. I want to go back with him, but take some characters. And I want to do this exploration of identity, right? Who am I? Who am I? Not bloodline, but we're going to use Africa, the slave trade and all that. But we're going to use that as a as a motif. Right. And we're going to go back and we're going to say, hey, who are we to this world? What are we to this world? What am I supposed to be? And literally, I told him that he was like, let's do it. Six days. He had booked like 12 tickets to Ghana, West Africa. We were on the same flight with my dad, came back, did great. Both films had got distribution, the nice festivals and all that. And I was like, all right, it's time for me. I'm gonna, I'm 26. I'm, I'm going back to LA now. I'm gonna do my thing. Um, and next thing you know, I drop right back down. I'm doing my thing. I'm getting some small roles, commercials again, and other small roles and things and shorts and boop boop. And but I'm now I'm a filmmaker. I'm fully, I'm fully engaged into my craft as a filmmaker. I'm studying. I'm, uh, you know, I've been doing that though since I was in HB Studios, right? I used to fall asleep at night watching. De Niro, Pacino, Denzel, Marlon Brando. I used to sleep, you know, I, I was staying with Grandma Bowers and I used to just fall asleep to that stuff, man, and get on the PATH train the next morning, go back to New York, go to school, go to the library, just fully immersing myself into what it means to be an artist, right? Watching the world around me. Because like, you know, I used to, I tell a lot of people this, the, um, you learn a lot by just watching the world, right? You could be in class all you want to, but if you don't understand what's around you, how do you portray it, right? How do you portray it? So I tell people all the time, watch yourself, right? Analyze yourself, watch the people that are around you. Look at the characters that are around you. They are going to fuel your artistic vision. They are going to fuel you artistically. If you've been hurt in a car accident, call 716-390-9592. Our lawyers can help you get money. Had your civil rights or contract rights violated? Stopped or wrongfully detained by the police? Call us now, 716-390-9592. Got an issue with your landlord or tenant? Call us now, 716-390-9592. Call RHM Consulting, 716-390-9592. That's 716-390-9592. I'm Rashid H. McDuffie, and I approve this message. just just really digesting everything science fiction everything you know in the spiritual realm you know and taking it to that you know narrative form because my documentaries were spiritual but now it was time to take it into narrative and those you don't see that a lot you know what i'm saying like those deep kind of spiritual but also you know, you know, action and you know what I'm saying with, you know, you know, with a lot of character development. And so, and so I just started doing that, you know, and time is, I'm, I'm doing web series. I'm doing, I'm meeting people. I got burnt a couple of times with business, business ventures and doing stuff with, you know, other artists, but it never took my joy away. It never took my passion away. And I never became such a pessimist where I was like, man, forget this and, th and, and thought everybody was against me right i never i never went there i never went there and i said god i prayed to god i said god just put the right people in my life right that's supposed to be in my life right 
And so within a year, my boy, my boy from Howard, I didn't go to Howard, but my, my family, all my family went there. He used to work with me at the film festival, the American Black Film Festival. We were both like, you know, volunteers. Um, we had stayed in touch, my boy Logan Coles. He said, yo, I'm moving to LA. And, and all of a sudden we just started hanging out. Before he got here, he was coming back and forth. He was a producer at Nickelodeon. And his uh, producing partner and co college friend was Chadwick. And so from that point, um, like eight, nine years ago, we became thick as thieves, tight as brothers, you know? And we just started doing everything together. And that was my tribe. And so I had this house right outside, of, uh, right out, right, right on Highland Avenue. And what I did was I made, I made my house the artist house. So every week I would have a party at my house, right? And I would invite all my friends that was artists. And we would just sit around and talk shop. Like it was felt like back in the day when the Niagara movement turned into the NAACP. It was just like one of those things. Like people used to come out every week, I'd cook it up for them. We would sit and talk, have, have drinks and talk about art and really be enthralled and be invested in what we were saying and what we're talking about because we're all artists and we're out here uh, doing our thing and making it. And so Chad goes off and gets Black Panther and he says, yo man, We've been training together. We've been boxing, doing martial arts, lifting together. Why don't you come on and train and you can be like an advisor and just train me on the films and do all that. I was like, man, I was like, absolutely. Absolutely. I was like, let's do it. And so from there, and this is a, you know, but besides all that, I'm writing, when I'm doing all this, I'm writing scripts, I'm submitting scripts, I'm doing shorts and doing all that, right? While I'm doing this. So I'm training him. Um, and, and we're in Atlanta now. Uh, I did, we, we went to Berlin for, for a month to do Captain America Civil War. That was great. In Atlanta for another month. Great experience under the Marvel's tutelage in a sense. Um, I was watching everything behind the scenes, how they did their marketing, how they, how everybody did everything. I was just really taking it all in, not even asking questions, just observing, listening, watching. You know what I mean? But the greatest thing of it all was that relationship and watching a world-class actor uh, um, work with his material and how he how he approached everything. It was amazing. It was a it was a master class, and I was there firsthand. You know what I mean? And you know, Chad is a, was a few years older than me, and so not only was he a, a friend and brother, he was also a mentor. He's a great artist. Um, and so we're in Atlanta, we're in Atlanta doing that because after Captain America, we had some time off. You know, go to Buffalo, shoot Marshall. Um, then we're in Atlanta. And you know, we're shooting Black Panther. And I swear, my friends always say this. They say, Addison, you were the king of Atlanta for about seven, eight months. Because what I used to do, I used to, every other week, I would have a party at some nice dope establishment for the cast and crew and all the actors and all that stuff, the producers and all that. And so everybody got to know who I was. So, so while doing that, I started putting together people that could come and help me on the weekends to shoot my own thing. Because I knew eventually I was going to do GLD. Right, I, I didn't know I was gonna shoot GLD, but I know I was gonna do a feature in Buffalo. And so I just started shooting these shorts in uh, in Atlanta and the people that were like, we, I, I built a, a tight consortium of artists there and everybody got behind me and we were doing our thing. You know, we were just doing our thing. Um, and then from there, man, from there, and mind you, I am writing a lot during this same point. I'm writing features, I'm writing TV shows and stuff that I'm setting up right now, now that I'm in my, in my moment, right? So I'm doing all that. And so, man, we about to go work on 21 Bridges, right? And I looked at Chad, we were in Silver Lake. We were watching Jaws on this outside screen. And I looked at him, I said, yo, I'm about to do a movie about a, about a virus and a hitman, right? about a virus and a hitman. And I started explaining to him the plot a little bit. He's searching for peace during the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? The people that don't wanna, and I, he was like, yo, that sounds dope, but how you gonna do that? How you gonna do this? I said, don't worry, I'm gonna do it. Wrote the script, got some notes, sat with Chad or whatever, came to Buffalo with the script. It was like, okay, we about to do this. I didn't have no money. I had none, I had none. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna come home and raise the money. I'm gonna raise the money. I come home, months pass, I'm not raising enough to make a movie. And then next thing you know, this is, is how shit works for me. Next thing you know, I got a call from somebody in LA and they said, yo, somebody told me you're trying to make a movie. I was like, yeah, I am, I am, I am. You know, a friend of mine, you know, like an associate. He was like, send me the script, I think I know somebody. 
I said, okay, let's see. And so he, I sent him the script because I was almost ready to call it in. I was almost ready to be like, damn, this is the first project I'm not going to be able to make. But like, I'm ne this never happens to me. And two days later, I swear, I had $150,000 in my bank account. He called his dude and said, yo, he wants to make this movie. Let's make it happen. And I was like, okay, okay, we're making a movie. We're making a freaking movie. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for a feature film and what we were trying to do, what I was trying to do with it. And so I was like, all right, all right, all right. And so now I made I made good friends with Joe Wilson. He's a showrunner. Um, he used to uh, be the second in command on The Shy. He's doing Equalizer now, the TV show. And, you know, we made good friends. Um, and so one of my producers, Leah Cohen Mays, has been knowing him for 30 years. He said, let me see the script. Let me send it to my friends, um, Jason and Yvonne. They're doing this. This is what they want to do. Okay. Lagra Lane, they want to ask her for a movie they produce called Icarus, right? And so they're also actors, the two figureheads behind the company. I sent them the script. Two and a half weeks passed, three weeks. I was like, ah, they hated it. They hate me. Ah, you know, I started going to that mode. Got a phone call like a day after I had that thought. And they said, so what do y'all need to make this project happen? What do y'all need? Man, we need we need six figures. You know, I, I'm not gonna give you the exact number. Well, we need that. Okay. Within a week, we had the money in our bank account. We were making our movie. And so, and and so we went off to make the movie. And from start to finish, from start to finish, dog, from script to screen was a nine-month process for for an indie feature film. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. And, it's a, and, it, and it speaks a lot to the people that work with me, to our ingenuity and making stuff happen. And so that's that's how that happened, man. And now we went on to win awards. Um, and now we're, we're gonna be on a, a, a great streaming service and people are gonna be able to see this movie. And it's also led me to everything that's happening now, which is a complete blessing. <laughs> And the winner is... Maybe you should tell me. When I do stuff, and when the people that are around me, when we do stuff, we do it with class, man. We can't do it, we don't do it any other, we don't do it any other way. Because I'm not doing it, and that's per se to win awards, but I'm doing it as if it's gonna be up for awards. That's the way I do it, and I and, and I and I pride myself with taking a little bit and making a lot out of it, you know. And that's what that's basically comes down to your mind. How do you see things? How are you going to frame things? And can you get people to do the things that you need to do for you, right? With the limited resources, right? Will they believe in you enough? And I've been fortunate enough to have people in the city of Buffalo and people here in LA that believe in my vision and get behind me and believe in my leadership and they say we're going to get behind this guy and we're going to support him and we're going to help him out we're going to help him out to get, see his goal because we believe in what he's doing and so and so yeah and so god now it went on like to win best free play at the american black film festival and that's a blessing man that's a blessing that festival is in its 24th year it's, i've seen it grow from when I used to intern and volunteer when I was a young boy to what it is now, a big, big success. And for me to have won that award, it was the closing of a particular chapter. It was like, a, a you know, it's like one of those circles within a circle, within a circle. And it's all a part of my tree, my, my, my life tree and my sequence. Um, and so for me, it was like, oh, that's the closing of that. Now this new circle is forming in my life that is gonna take me to a whole new stratosphere. There's a lot of great things in the future. Um, you know, um, I have been, uh, my family has been interconnected with um, Rick James and Leroy Johnson. They're the, those two brothers, their family since the 1950s. And what's next is a television series about Leroy and Rick James. Um, for over 15 years, I've been wanting to tell this story. And when I reconnected with Leroy, I looked at myself 
Um, I went to the bathroom after we started talking and all that, and he came on, G-O-D, and I looked in the mirror and I said, oh my God. I said, I'm the one that's going to do this story. I knew it. I knew I was going to be the one, you know? And so that's next. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. You know, that this has come to fruition like this because everybody's excited about it. The whole city's excited about it. People in LA, LA, people in LA are excited about it. Uh, people that are working with me are excited about it. Um, for the last for the last five years, I've been literally setting myself up with projects that can last me the next decade of my life. So I have another movie that I that I what I just finished uh, uh, writing that's over at Sony right now looking to actually go into production on that in the summer and then move into uh, pre-production on rick um you know and seeing where we're going to go with that if we're going to do one two or three seasons we don't know yet uh we you know we, we're going to leave that up to the studio when we kind of like when we're pitching and all that stuff uh, because there's so much there um have another television series that i just was in the producers guild of america diversity workshop in called the healer um that's another project that that's hot on my plate um, so I got another a couple another couple projects that I feel that will 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 get me through to my to into for the next decade, and then I can go and I can have my solar power a solar power farm with my with my I can eat farm to table and I can go do my own projects. Man, that's really what I want to do. I want to live in peace and be able to create great artwork. That's that's really what the end game is for me. But I also want to give back to my community, um, the city of Buffalo. Um, you know, uh, you know that I want to give back to that community, and I always want to have a, a, a foothold there. This is Addison Henderson, and this is how I came up. Maria, Radio Red Rocks, Red. This is Addison Henderson. I'm Danielle Jackson. It's Ponzo Houdini, and this is how I came up. I'm the career change guru, Sam Hill, and host of How I Came Up. This season, we have entertainers, entrepreneurs, and educators. Season three of How I Came Up is going to be extraordinary. Now let's get to it. This is How I Came Up.